I'm Dan Johnson talking with Dennis Carley about the Aerolite 103. I've all along been fascinated by this airplane because it meets 103 easily. It flies nicely. It has all the right bits and pieces on it. When did you really get involved with the Aerolite, and how's that going? It's going really well. We bought the uh, company, uh, the design rights, all the tooling, all the materials back in 2012. Started producing the airplanes in 2013, and it has far exceeded even our uh, our best expectations. You are running near capacity, you told me earlier. Yeah, we are definitely running uh, at capacity. We've got uh, f myself and four other employees, and uh, we are doing it full speed ahead every day, and it it's all we can do to meet the demand. So there are people that say... Part 103 airplanes, first of all, there's not a fixed wing one that meets the that can meet the actual numbers. That's wrong, folks. Don't believe that. Here's one that does. Uh, you can make it way too much, of course. You can do that with any airplane, but it's easily possible to make Part 103 with this aircraft, right? Oh, absolutely. This one, as you see it sitting here, is about 15 pounds under the weight limit. There's a, there's a segment out there, as you know, Dan, that it's a home builder, and he's built something else uh, in the past, and he enjoys building, enjoys tinkering with the airplanes. Sometimes we have customers that... We'll literally build airplanes. You know, we've sold Challengers and Quicksilvers, and customers have built those airplanes. They'll fly them for uh, uh, 10 hours, and the next thing you know, you see it's for sale so they can finance the next kit that they want to build. They really enjoyed the building process. They got it. a hunger for the project itself. Yep, so yep. even though you'll do it for them and probably as well as anybody can do it, at a very good price, they still just want to be hands-on with it. Is that it? Yep, some guys do. And then, of course, if they do build it themselves, they'll save a little bit of money over what it would cost if we supplied it as a ready-to-fly aircraft. So it really gives them the opportunity, if we've got a customer that wants to build because he wants to build, we have that kit available for him. If we've got somebody that wants to save themselves a 1000 or a couple thousand dollars on the price, they can build it. And if we've got somebody that just doesn't want to wait for us to get it done, then they have the opportunity then to get it done themselves. In, in I'm kind of guessing time. the last thing is maybe one of the driving factors, too, beside that interest in projects, which is very real. And I understand that, that some people just have a pride of craftsmanship. Okay, so is the kit available? If I said, great, I'm a craftsman, I want to do all that stuff, can I get a kit today? You can you can place the order today. The kits we have, uh, we built 20 airframes here the last uh, round of, uh, of uh, construction that we did. And so we have about half of those designated as, as kits. The, the sales take us three to four weeks to have those uh, sewn up from our sale maker. So we can ship you a kit usually within three to four weeks at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how about the assembly process then? Now, I'm guessing that most of those people that have that craftsmanship orientation well, they could probably figure out an awful lot of it on their own, but how good is the documentation to help you? It's step by step uh, with with written instructions on how to do it. There's photographs in there so you can you know you can see what we're describing to you. The parts that are you know a lot of this is done in jig, so a lot of the construction of the the difficult components that's already done. You're ah, okay. basically a so you're not having to build jigs. No, no, no. You're you're putting bolt A, a into hole B and like that. Absolutely, yeah. So it is, you know, you you see the the industry always says it's geared for the first time builder and I've been on the builder side of that many times and it's not <laughs> not, it's not always, always quite that way. That's huh? right. <laughs> but this really is something that the first time builder can do. It's a, it's an assembly kit. They can get it together if they follow the instructions. It'll fly correctly and they won't have any dif any great difficulties. Now, I'm imagining there's one more value in there. Part 103 is, to me, uh, an extraordinarily charming part of the FAR code. The entire regulation can be written on the front and back of a single piece of paper. I don't think there's anything else like that in aviation. So for me, that's so special, I wouldn't mess with it. But there are people who just go, well, but I want to have X, some component, some feature, some quality to the airplane that pushes it out of that. Even though you're well under it with this example we see right here, it's not hard to add weight to an airplane either. And if they go over a few pounds and they go, well, I don't care because I'll fly it as an experimental. Is that an argument that some people are bringing to you? Yeah, we have some folks that want to put bigger engines on and bigger engines means heavier empty weight of the airplane, which would push it out of the part 103 category. So if they want to do that, or, you know, they can build it in the configuration they, they want. And if it's above that, then they can certificate it as amateur build experimental. Okay, well, there's one more thing I want to ask you about. Uh, in the airplane, I've, I've only ever seen it on wheels, but recently I came across a picture of one of these things on floats. Yeah. Is that a real thing? Oh, yeah, that's a real thing. And we've got a couple planes at our shop right now that are going on to uh, 
14 foot uh, amphibious puddle jumper floats. We may have one of those up with us at, uh, at Oshkosh this year, depending on how far along we get with it. Okay, I do want to bring people's attention to the fact that you're located at the DeLand Airport. Uh, it has always been an airport where all aviation activity has been welcomed and everybody plays well together. There's, you know, powered paragliders on up to jet traffic and everybody gets along well. It's a very, very good airport, not only to fly in and out of, but also to do business at. And if you want to fall out of an airplane, they're pretty good at that too, huh? <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> no disrespect to skydivers, that's a cool activity, and uh, there is a lot of it going on there. In fact, your airport manager, John Eif, describes it as the world's capital of uh, skydiving parachuting. Yep. So uh, for more information about uh, Aerolite, here, tell us where we go on the web. We'll put it up on the screen for yep. folks. It's uh, www.fly103.com. There you go. Pretty simple. There's been plenty of writing about uh, Aerolite over the years on my website and lots of affordable aviation you can find on bydanjohnson.com.